Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I've recently, as you know, been working on more uh, electrical projects and, and electrical engineering type stuff, particularly with the Arduino platform. And uh, in my adventures, I've ended up meeting up with some folks who, who do some pretty cool stuff here in New York and have recently started up a sort of program called the Open Source Hardware Bank, where they're hoping to st uh, to stimulate and sort of directly fund open source hardware development and definitely making some pretty cool stuff. There's a link on my page. I definitely urge you to check them out. Uh, and they recently created a logo and I thought it would be a fun project just to uh, take that logo, pull it into Bobcad through the art plugin and just mill it out pretty quickly for them. So I'm just going to give a quick walkthrough of how I did that. I covered this topic before but figured maybe it'll be a good refresher. So I'm going to go into Bobcad, load the image, I've got it here as a JPEG. Now I'm going to mill this out on a. It's the piece. Oops, the piece is about a. F uh, I think about a three and a half or four inch size, and this is a much bigger piece here. It's about twelve, ten or eleven inches. So what we're going to do is right click and we'll do vectorize. As always, the important thing here is the threshold value. Go ahead and experiment with that. In this particular one, I think about two forty or 235 will work. There are a lot of, uh, of, of contours and curves in this, uh, in this logo and uh, because I don't have it in a ideal sort of vectorized format, I have it in a JPEG format, I'm going to go ahead and uh, decrease the accuracy threshold or, or sort of increase the accuracy from 0.8 to 0.5 and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is reduce the size since I know I want it to be a bit smaller and I'll just say 4 by 3.8 keeping the aspect ratio click OK this will take a second here to calculate it, it would be much quicker if I hadn't reduced the accuracy to the 0 .05 pixels um, that's going to add a lot of data to the file size but I think it'll be worth it for what we're trying to do here great so as you can see, there's my original logo in about ten and a half inches, and then here's my four inch version. So I can go ahead and hide or blank the picture, and I will now go ahead and zoom in. Oops. And there you see it. So even though these ones and zeros and stars aren't perfect, it'll be plenty sufficient for what I'm trying to do and we're just going to go ahead and go basically straight to the cam here, not a lot of work to do. Um, if this were something I were doing in, in volume quantity or for sort of a professional output, I would either get a high resolution image to start with or I would spend some time tweaking the format of these numbers and these stars, but like I said, this will work fine for now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a two axis profile. I'm going to go ahead and select the geometry. Take just go ahead and take everything. The program is working slow here, both because I'm running my screen recording software and because the uh, size of the actual Bobcat file. So you'll have to bear with me. Great. I selected all of that geometry. And I have found when I'm doing engraving like this that I would rather use a 45 degree tipped uh, end mill, basically, a four flute end mill, rather than a true uh, engraving piece. Uh, if you do want to use an engraving piece which has a very small tip diameter, you need to really get your spindle RPMs up well over 10,000 and you still run the risk of of wearing out or breaking that tip and they're just not as rigid. So what I like to do well, sorry, we'll do no offset here, is I like to take that 45 degree end mill, four fluid end mill, and go about 5,000 deep. And I'm going to run that at about 6,500 RPM. I'll run the cut here, the X and Y's at 7, and the Z doesn't really matter, but we'll just do 5. Uh, and that's it. Just compute your toolpath, and then I imported this into uh, Mach 3. I will say two things which stood out. Uh, the first is that uh, well, just as an FYI, it took about 50 minutes to run the code on my mill, and uh, the biggest 
comment I have there was that Bobcad, when you select the geometry by just selecting all, it doesn't think about how to mill the part efficiently or in an intelligent manner. So what happens is you end up milling a number in the top right and say something in the top left or in the middle or all over the place. So I probably spent at least half of the time uh, under spindle just doing rapids. So obviously that's not efficient. I think there are more efficient ways you can do it even in Bobcad, but um, I wasn't too worried about it because I just made one. And sure enough, now we've computed our toolpath. Let me just change the color of that toolpath so you can see it. I'll make it green. And here you can see all the dotted lines across our rapid movements. I've got 60 inch rapids on my mill, which is actually pretty good for a hobby mill, but nevertheless, wasted time. Um, so here I've got a couple quick videos of the part being made, as well as an image shot coming right up.